Oh, hello there, friends and family. Uh, I didn't see you there for a minute. You sort of snuck up on me. Of course, I wasn't expecting to see you today, you know. This is December 11th. And we're out on the property. Got to do some things, you know, some little things, you know. Things that are productive. <laughs> and you might wonder, well, why not I think that I'd see you today? Well, you may not be aware of it. Of course, some of you probably are. I know some of you who watch my channel here, as well as uh, other channels, you know, prep channels, homesteading channels, gardening channels, what have you. Uh, you'll be aware of why we're, I'm so surprised to see you today. Yep. And uh, why is that? Well, just for those of you who didn't know, we uh, had, you know, fairly large solar flare. Yep, from our sun. Back on December 7th, that was Monday. Yeah, when I went to Super Beach. It was a C7.4. A pretty big one. Yep. Not the biggest, but it was a big one. And along with that, it produced a CME. And now, what's a CME? Well, that's a coronal mass ejection. And what that is, is, you know, it's an ejection of plasma and electromagnetic flux. Yep. And it heads out in whatever direction in space that the sun's facing at the time. Now, on December 7th, uh, when this solar flare happened in this CME, it was facing towards the Earth. And it was predicted by NASA and NOAA. You know, you can go up there and look at their space weather, uh, solar activity center to uh, start impacting the earth on December the 9th and then uh, they expected it to be a G1 event which is the lowest most minor electromagnetic storm impacting the earth and then uh, on uh, yesterday, December the 10th, while we were out down at the park, it was supposed to be even uh, have more of an effect, and they raised the level for December the 10th to a G3, yep, which is strong. G1 being minor, G2 being moderate, G3 being uh, strong, and they have, I think, two more scales. But you can look all that up, up on the knoll. NOAA, that's N-O-A-A, -A, uh, Solar Weather Activity Site. And I'll leave the link below. I probably ain't saying it right, no way. Anyway, so why is that important? Well, this all started coming out Monday night and then uh, continued on. And for the FMCs, you know, that's fear mongering channels. They started really hyping this up. Oh yeah. Yep. Here we go. This is the big one. <laughs> and when I first heard about it, I uh, looked into it. Looked into the NOAA predictions, NASA's, and even you know had it been a G3. What the impact would be? Sort of you know refresh my memory. And it was basically, you know, could be, might be, maybe. Got to read all those little terms that all of them leave out. Could impact uh, certain radio frequencies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And anybody who's familiar with CB, uh, sideband radio, ham radio, they'll know. Solar activity does certain radio frequencies. In fact, there are times when solar activity can pretty much make it impossible to use certain frequencies. And then they also said there could be some impact on the power grid. 
you know, things could trip out. Could, might. Uh, depending on the duration, uh, transformers could heat up and might, could, or maybe, damage. Yep. So, you know, I did my due diligence, you know, like my analytical mind, engineer, hearing a profession warranted, looked into it in great depth. But then I also uh, went ahead and uh, sat in, you know, sort of behind the scenes on uh, many channels I follow. They're prepping channels, homesteading channels, see what they had to say. And of course, I wasn't all too pleased because we got to take it all to the extreme. We don't say might, maybe, could be. Oh no. This will, you know, this is strong. And they, time and time again. And I just want to say something in these chats and put out the facts, but you know, I get crucified. Because people want to believe this. Yeah, they sure do. You know, we all know for yourselves, it even sells better than sex. <laughs> Hard as that is to believe. And that, but anyway, even as of a late evening of the night, some of these outlets were saying, you know, we may not be able to upload or live stream tomorrow we hope to we're praying and of course as you saw oh mr tom not only did he do video he uploaded in fact i watched youtube till after midnight last night yep i did i think many of y'all did mm -hmm. and i was editing as i was listening to some of these in the background that's what i do a lot of times i edit while I'm listening to these uh, different outlets. And you might want to say, well, if I don't believe in what they're putting out, why well, do? Well, I just want to know who's steering the herd, yep, and where it's driving to. You never know. It's like they say, blind squirrel find a nut every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, he will. You know, and that's the way these channels go. They put this stuff out, drive people into a fevered pitch, you know, to go out and buy things they don't need and can't possibly work, trust me. Like that EMP shield. <laughs> go ahead and buy one. And if you think those little tiny wires coming out of that little plastic box are gonna protect anything you got from a EMP or a coronal mass, ejection seeing me good luck with that if you do your research you'll find there's a whole lot of us professionals out there who say the same thing it don't matter that's veteran owned made in america and uh, military and airports and all that you trust me they ain't using that little box with those little tiny little wires coming out you know any electrical engineer will tell you ain't no way those wires are ever going to hold up to 228 Hundred thousand amps ain't gonna happen. That ain't just Mr. Tom. That's every electrical engineer on the face of the planet will tell you that. Yep, sure will. But anyway, buy them if you want to. They're pricey. And that, of course, you know, every time something like this is gonna happen, uh, all the Faraday cages come up. And then, you know, these people who hawk these little uh, nylon bags with aluminum filament, stainless steel woven in and whatever, you know, you can put your cell phone in there and then have somebody dial and it won't ring. Well, yeah, maybe it won't. Maybe it will. Uh, is it going to keep uh, coronal mass ejection from burning up your electronics? Yeah, I'm here to tell you, good luck with that one. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. So what can you do if this happens? Well, here's my point. Let's say you could and have spent all the money to 
protect all your electronics, your computers, your cell phone. This is something they never bring up when they're saying all this. What good is any of it if the power grid's down? Because, you know, they said the power grid's going to go down. Uh, throw us back in the Stone Age, it will. Yeah. Well, not that this past one, which I might add, was downgraded today from being nothing more than a G1 on yesterday, which, like I said, was minor. It just didn't live up to even what NASA or NOAA thought it would be. Of course, just like weathermen, you know, forecasting weather, look at all the hype they put on it. Yep. You know, and just like weathermen, I looked at the averages. It's basically 50 50. You want to be a weatherman? You know, you can flip a coin, most likely. You'll be about as accurate as any weather person in that. And that's mathematical facts. Some might be better, some might be worse, but the average is about 50 50. Same way on these space weather people. And that. Now, had it been a G3? strong electromagnetic storm what would have been the consequence well like i told you radio interference some possible satellite navigational uh, interference and a very very slim chance that it could overheat some transformers and that and kick out some protective circuits it may possibly set off a few car alarms. You know, but then when I was watching last night on some of these lives, oh yeah, we had the power blink. Yeah. Here, here goes that justification I was talking about yesterday during the countryside ride or city side ride. That's what it was. See, we're going to find things to justify our point of view. Good or bad. Yeah, where, you know, if you have an analytical mind and that's all you care about, the facts, the data, you don't got an agenda, you ain't selling nothing, you ain't got nobody to impress, you know, all those things that old Miss Tom don't care a thing about, you're just going to stick with the data and the facts. And if that could support the hypothesis, then you go with it. But, you know, a good engineer, a good scientist tell tell you, this is my best educated guess and hypothesis. You don't hear much about that anymore. It's just facts now, folks. It sure is. And that, but that's all the reason. I am uh, so thankful all of y'all could come on over today. Internet's still on. Didn't go out. Woke up this morning. Didn't see no news articles nowhere or nothing about any major outages. Uh, power grids for the most part, yeah. You know, except everyday stuff. They're still cranking along. Yeah, nobody died because of it. Trucks still running, grocery stores still going, life goes on, right? And that brings me back to, you got to listen. And a lot of these places, they only show you now little paragraphs or snippets of articles. And even when they show something that's got a few things in there they really don't want to highlight, you look at them. They highlight the areas they want you to focus on. And the areas in between, I've noticed it say may, could be, might, possibility. They make sure those aren't highlighted. <laughs> I'm not going to name names in that. And I actually had some friends, well, they're YouTube friends, come out last day or so. And they didn't go dive off deep in it. They still threw it in there that, oh, it could be a possibility. Yeah, old Miss Tom could be out here walking and I got spooky at my feet wanting to be playful digging in my leg hold on spook what are you doing you killing me dude 
You want to play? Do you want to play? You want to play? You just do. I'll get your belly. I'll get that belly. Yes, I will. I'll get your belly. Now, come on. We talking about something serious here. But anyway. As you can see, Spooky wants to play. He's just so darn happy. He's alive. Survived the CME. And Poppy. <laughs> Cleo is napping in the car, folks. Magoo and Nailrod and them. They're out and about just happy to be alive and be kitties. Spook, you're still killing me. <laughs> oh my, here. Here, stick, stick, stick. Go get the stick. There you go. Get the stick. Fetch. Most kitties won't fetch. And uh, he'll chase them when I throw them. He ain't much on the fet fetching part, <laughs> as you can see. So, we're out here. Now that we've survived all this uh, massive coronal mass ejection. And that. And we came out because it's a beautiful day at 72 degrees. I can't believe it. It's December the 11th. 72 degrees, bright sunshine. And we're picking off our dried uh, Kentucky Wonder rattlesnake pole bean crosses that sort of on their own. And with God's help, cross last year. And the reason we're doing that is to save the seeds. Yep. See? Pods are all nice and dry now. Yeah. And we ain't got to shuck the seeds out of them right today. We'll take them in, hang them up in the house, and we'll do that another day. And if y'all would like to see how that's all done, it ain't hard, folks. Uh, we can do that for you. And some of them, I've let get, you know, a little... Uh, over, not over dry, but the pods are getting in sad shape. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of volunteer beans here come next spring. But this has always been a bean patch, so it ain't no big deal, right? And you can hear a rooster in the background. That's my neighbor's block up. They got chickens. Yeah. And that, several roosters. And that's just fine. They get eggs. I'm not sure if they ever eat, eat any of those chickens like I would. There's more than one or two roosters. You need to slim them down. Make some chicken stew or soup or baked chicken or what have you. Right, Spook? Spook says just, you know, boil it up, <laughs> chop it up. He's good with that. So. And that, uh, and I'll, I'll get some thumbs down on this video. And people say, well, why even do it, Miss Tom, if that's going to happen? Well, I'm trying to infuse into my children, my grandson, and hopefully y'all. Before you take what somebody says to be the gospel, do your own research. Before, especially before you panic. Spend your money and research in depth. You know, just don't go around YouTube. And as always, like I say, these people who are putting this out there, ask yourself, what's their motivation? And if any time during their videos or podcasts or live streams, there are things, you know, not freeze dry food, dehydrated food, EMP shields, you know, little Faraday bags, or whatever it is that they're hawking. Then ask yourself, how sincere are they? Yep, ask yourself that. That's what I ask myself. What's the agenda? What's the motivation? And I have said, and I'll stick to it, that I'm trying to stay positive. Now, granted, if uh, I come across something that's life 
changing and something that is going to affect our lives, mine, my children's, my grandchildren's, and all of y'all's. Oh, you can bet. We're going to fire up the GoPro or the Canon or whatever. We're going to do a quick video and we're going to get that out there. But like always, it's down below the video. There'll be links to reputable scientific data. Yep. You sure will, just like always. And I'll put one below this, you know. The NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center's website. And if you would like to go on there and learn about all the different in sizes of solar flares and what happens. If you'd like to learn about the CME scale from uh, the smallest to the largest and what they expect or think will happen. Now, granted, most of this has never happened in modern scientific times, so we don't know. <laughs> so we're going to have to experience that. Now, as soon as I said that, everybody brings up the keratin, but like I said, modern scientific times. Not back in the days of DC-powered telegraphs and thin gauge wire strung up on telephone poles <laughs> before the age of circuit breakers, fuses, and all that kind of stuff. Yep. That's why I always say you got to look at it in today's terms. But like I said, the people who push this stuff, they use the Carrington event even though it is it anywhere near relative to today and what we have in place both protection system wise technology wire gauge knowledge and all of that no oh, no it'd be the same as uh comparing a stanley steamer to a tesla yeah Maybe even more than that. That's just an engineer trying to tell you a little bit about things in life. You know? Now, I didn't go to no university and get me no liberal arts degree. I apologize for that. Not, not the same people who didn't. Don't, ain't good people. But I'll never know how they can be so darn knowledgeable about matters of engineering, mathematics, and science. I don't know. Maybe they feel they can't, because in this day and age, you know, we can be anything we want to be. Yeah. Yeah, sure can. If you don't believe it, you just ask somebody. <laughs> I'm not of that mind. So, that's why I came on today. Well, I was out here, you know, picking off some beans. They were going to take in dry up. Or, well, they're already dry. we got to shell them later, and we'll do that on a real cold winter day. See them here in the shells? Yeah. Trust me, they're dry. And we got plenty more to pick. Yep. And we'll have plenty of seed for next year. Now, even though I've bad mouth our latest CME scare and that I'm still out here preparing yeah or some say prepping yeah me and old spooky we still stocking it up today we stocking up seed but it ain't only seed that we can plant next year for a new crop uh, push come to shove, and if I didn't have more uh, dry beans stored up and family of four could eat for the next six years, I could even eat some of them. Yep. And if you don't got dried beans put up, or even canned beans, which will last way longer than that expiration date on that can, uh, I encourage you to buy a little each week put it back as well as rice and I'd also include 
instant taters and when you get your instant taters put up don't get the seasoned ones don't get the buttered ones just get plain potato flakes trust me on that one they'll last way longer and there's no ingredients in them that'll go rancid on you over time nope but you do what you want you be you no miss tom gonna be me and all i can do is tell you what i do yep sure can and it like i said it's a beautiful day and i just thank god that we survived our last solar storm <laughs> and that but i do hear there were some pretty northern lights up there some even in uh the upper uh, Michigan Peninsula and that all down through Canada and uh, some places in upper Illinois maybe Ohio Maine New Hampshire they, maybe they could see them if the skies were clear I've seen a few uh, photos on Instagram we didn't see them down here we just a little bit too far south. Some said, you know, if it was really bad, they'd see them down in southern Tennessee. Well, I know people up in southern Tennessee, and they went out there and stood and looked, and they didn't see me. <laughs> but that's enough of that. Let me show you what I've been up to. Some of you will be interested about, you know, the dried beans saving your seed what do you think spook should we show them spooky should we show them what do you think buddy hmm okay oh god your your claws are like needles dude chill <laughs> well as you can see spooky said yes so i mean you're just gonna come out here you know when you got all the beans you want and that you leave some pods on there. Of course, as soon as you do, your beans are going to start. Your beans are going to start wanting to produce less and less. You're going to let them dry. Here in the deep south, they're going to get spotted up. See, looks like mold. Oh, it is mold. It's on the outside of the pot. Ain't going to affect the inside of the bean. None, trust me. But when I shell them, I'll look. You know, I'll be looking at that. To see in any that they're deformed, shriveled up, or, uh, you know, look undesirable, I'll toss. All the ones that, you know, look nice, I'll save for next year for seed. You can raise any green bean for dried bean. Yes, you can. A little pro tip there. Now, with all that said, it may not be as productive as certain varieties that are meant to just be raised for dried beans. Yep. It may not be. But, you'll still get some. And that. And I don't think there's anything you can grow that's easier and as productive. Packed with protein, initial vitamins and minerals, than beans. So, I mean... To make a complete protein, you need some of that rice. But, you know. But you know, back in the day, I can't ever remember us eating a whole lot of rice. We had from time to time. Not all that often. We were more of a beans and tater family. And that. Then, uh, rice we're getting quite a few I'll have more seed than I'll need to plant 
for next year trust me I will hell I'll probably have enough volunteer plants come up here to plant a whole row over my new uh, not new but my new revised a revamped garden plot now, that's one I planted for years but I haven't planted in a few years too so there we have it it's just that simple folks come on out Pick off the dried pods, stick them in your old uh, shopping bag or bucket, you know, whatever you want. Take them on in, hang them up, and you'll be ready for next year, you will. And you can keep them just like this till you're ready to plant them. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Nothing at all. But... We about got it whooped for now. Spooky got tired of waiting on old Papa to play. I guess he finally got the idea. Uh, Papa wasn't in no mood to play right now. Hold on a second. Let me get these broke off this vine. Yep. Got a few more to go. Y'all probably tired of seeing it. Many of you, I'm sure going to be tired of me pooping, poop pooing on the people who, you know, warn us about all these major events that are going to kill us off here in 2020, you know. Now, granted, I do believe the virus is real. I've watched a lot of good people die. I've watched how they've died. And I'm smart enough to understand it wasn't the flu. Sorry. Of course, here again, that's my opinion based on what I've seen, what I know. And right now, that's the major threat in my mind. And that. And once you look at that, there's all the consequences. Should it get worse? You know, such things as uh, food shortages, meat shortages, you know, the list goes on and on and on, which could all possibly happen and have happened to some extent. That's why none of this here conversation today is about not preparing. Now, like I tell you, at the very least, you should have. A month put back and that's bare minimum three months is better six months is good a year to me is optimum once you start passing that year it gets hard to keep it all rotated or at least it does for me and that and uh, keep it all fresh that's just me. Yeah, but if you want to have enough, two, three, four, five, six years, I do like I do, because I do. It's all done up in uh, number 10 cans. Of course, it's got, you know, when appropriate, oxygen absorbers and moisture absorbers. And it's all sealed up, stored away in uh, cool, dark, dry places. And at the very least, it'll last 25 to 30 years. Maybe more. Hey, Spooky. We got another package. But I know what that one is. Because I ordered it off Amazon. Yep. I went fishing. And I saw on Amazon where they had tuna and water, five ounce. For a good deal. And it was way cheaper. Oh, there's Cleo. Way cheaper than Super Pavies. Yeah. So, of course, that's for y'all. 48 cans. So that should, yep, there you go, Cleo. 
And there's your treats. I'm going to give you some treats too, okay? Let's do that. And we'll wrap this on up on the front porch, okay? Won't we? Hold on. You want some treats? Hmm. Yep. Viewers sent them to you. There's some of your favorite. Hard to tell. Hold on while I get them open. You hear the doggies? Well, they're behind fences. Well, at least for now, right? Keep an eye out, Spook. Here we go, though. Here we go. Here, we'll just put that many left, okay? So just go for it. Yeah. Oh, well, Rod and Magoo missing out, aren't they? They sure are. Well, y'all, there you see. Just my little rant that I haven't done in a while. About what should have killed us and wiped us out this time. And like I say, I thank God it didn't. And I thank God that those who find they got to really hype it up and accentuate or emphasize the extreme possibilities of what could happen. Well, I hope they see there in their ways, at least, you know, tell it like it is. Not like it could be in a Hollywood movie. But if you ever want to know the real dope, based on my analytical research, my engineering mind, you can always come over here, see what I got to say. Several of those channels do stop by. That's how I get some of the thumbs down I get. And I'll get some on this one here. I, I'm, I'm imagining I'll get a pile. And you know what? I just don't care. We're just happy to be alive. Me and the kitty crew. Picking dried beans. And that. Oh my. Now we got Magoo. Magoo. Did you show up too? Magoo, you didn't make it in time, buddy. You was late to the scene. Yep. There's Magoo. Spooky. Cleo. Cleo, you eat like a hog. Then you start choking. My. <laughs> Go over and pat her on the back, Magoo. Okay? Come on. <laughs> Cleo, it'd be okay. As soon as Papa comes in, goes in, he'll get you some more of that there um, liquid hairball mess, and that seems to help. Okay? But if you wouldn't gobble down your treats and chew them, you'd be okay. I mean, my God, you found one in the grass. So anyway, as you can see, uh... My kitty crew's okay outside. The only one we're missing right now is Elrod. I'm sure he's out and about. Probably at his other home. Or sleep somewhere. Waiting on the evening chow. And that. Speedy, doing well. I expect an update call a little bit later. And of course, Grace and Trixie. Uh... Her Majesty Trixie and Princess Gracie, <laughs> they're doing just fine too. So y'all, until I see you on the next video, yeah, keep preparing. Take care out there. Stay safe. And may God bless each and every one of you, your friends, your family, and loved ones. Until me, Magoo, Cleo, Spooky, Trixie Grayson, Elrod, and Speedy. See you on the next video. Goodbye for now. Magoo, do I need to go in and get some more treats? Out of the treat vault? Hmm? What do you think?
spooky. You guarding the... No. That's Cleo. God, I gotta start putting collars on y'all. They're guarding their tuna. We got a get in on in there, too. Come on, guys. Magoo, grab the case of tuna. Get Spooky to help you if you need it. Let's get her on inside, okay? What do you say? Hmm? What do you say? Oh, I gotta go in. Put my dried beans up, hang them up. See what uh, Tricks and Grace are up to, okay? Y'all hang tight for a bit. It's only gonna be about two hours. Okay? <laughs>